the cool part about non-rev travel is there's a lot of freedom and there's a lot of flexibility. Non-rev passengers fly at the availability of the aircraft. If there's an open seat available, then they will slide you in. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums. Meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Hey, pilot. How are you? It's Nick Fialka. You found Spitfire Elite's best podcast called ready for pushback. And I am your host. I'm glad you're here. This is a solo episode. If it's your first time, welcome. Glad you're here. You know that every Thursday, I put out a solo episode. And every Monday, I put out an interview. And the interview is with somebody I think is cool from the industry about a topic that I think is important. And today, with this solo show, I am talking about something that I think is probably the most important benefit, the most fun benefit at least, for a person that is an airline pilot. And this is called non-revving. A lot of you may already know what non-revving is, but some of you may not. And I want to share with you what a cool, cool thing this is. Non-revving is an abbreviation. It means non-revenue air travel. And so Some people call it staff travel, but most people call it non-revving. And it is a basically a ticket that you can use if you are an airline employee or a retired employee. And you can use these free tickets to fly basically wherever you want. And it's a really, really awesome, awesome opportunity. If you fly for an airline, a passenger airline, and they go places, you can hop on and go with them. And this is this is cool. If there's an open seat available, then they will slide you in and you can just hop on and get on a plane in Charlotte and fly to Africa or fly to Europe or wherever. You can take multiple aircraft as long as you stay within the parameters that your company has allotted. It's a really cool thing. When you are flying on a non-revenue ticket, usually it's free or steeply discounted. Most of the time it's free. Domestically, it's always free. When you are flying internationally, you may have to pay some taxes or something. I know that London has higher taxes than Paris. And so some people look at where they want to be generally and try to find a place that has a lower tax fee associated with it. And it's just so much fun. It depends on your company as far as like how many non-revenue tickets you can get. If you are a married person or you have a significant other that is listed, you can add your spouse and your children to your portfolio and go with them. They can take non-revenue tickets as well. Children travel usually until they're about 18 or something, something close to that. And I used this actually a couple months ago. I sent my oldest son, Frasati, down to visit his grandparents in Florida, and he's 11. And we were able to send him as an unaccompanied minor, gave him a little bit of freedom to just be in charge of his own destiny. And it was just super fun. It's just a great memory for him. And the other day, I was talking to Bill Sims, the uh, owner of Spitfire, one of the co-owners of Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. He and his family went to Switzerland and they flew for free all the way out to Switzerland and just had a blast. Non-rev passengers fly at the availability of the aircraft that you're on. So most everybody will have a special portal that they can log on to and they can see where the flights are going any given day and they can see 
how those flights are booked up, if they're wide open and they have a lot of seats available, or if they only have a few seats available. Usually in the summertime, it is much more difficult to uh, find open seats because lots of people travel during the summer. They have vacation, the kids are out of school, all those things. And people get ready to fly and love to fly and they get on those planes. But in the fall and winter time, when people are working and other people are in school, that's when a non-rev opportunities really, really open up. And you can find multiple seats. You know, we have a family of seven. So I try to find planes that have many, many open seats. And here's what's important to know. Ticketed passengers, people that buy tickets, they come first. They get their seats assigned and any extra space that's left over, we try to fill it with any non-revenue passengers that are around at the gate. And so you check in with the gate agent ahead of time before everybody starts boarding and you let them know you're there and they check you in. And then you just sit and wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. Everybody gets loaded and then they see how many seats are left. And each person is prioritized. Some people are prioritized really, really high, which would be like people traveling for company business or executives. They have a higher non revenue category than a pilot would. And it could depend on some, there are different parameters. We have, At my company, it depends on when you are hired. If you're an active pilot or flight attendant and you are senior and you've been there for a long time, you have a greater advantage. Your priority is higher than a new hire. And that is uh, really helpful to see because those people that are at the airline for a longer period of time, it makes it easier for them to travel. Now, your family members, they are of lower priority. And so just because you get a ticket doesn't mean all of your other family members will also get seats. And that is tricky and you have to balance that. Along with that, retirees are usually bucketed below active employees so that you have to know how the game is played with your specific airline and where you are going to go. Non-rev is different than jump seating. Okay. So if you are a pilot and you have, and you are part of a domestic airline, they have reciprocal agreements with other airlines to help pilots get to and from work and travel and things of that nature. And so you can jump seat in the actual flight deck of the aircraft and sit up front with a headset on and basically be part of the crew. You have to have an active medical, you have to have a valid pilot certificate, you have to have an ID, you have to have an FCC operator license. And if you have all of those things, then you are granted access into the aircraft, into the flight deck, and you can sit up front. Sometimes you'll have a pilot jump seating and the family will be on non-rev tickets in the back. That is a thing that happens. The cool part about non-rev travel is there's a lot of freedom and there's a lot of flexibility. And this benefit just sticks with you. If you guys, if you're single, man, I know some single guys and girls that just travel the world and they just go out and they'll go see the world and travel around and come back for their work trips. And it's really, really fun. Seeing the world, not spending a lot of money. It's just a big, big game changer. And it's it's a lot of fun. But I do want to warn you that there are some downsides, right? If that's full, if that flight has no seats available, you are not going to get on board. And it can be kind of stressful because it's a last minute thing. When the plane is loaded and everybody's on, there might be one seat available. There might be 40 seats available. You just never know. And so you have to have a little bit of flexibility. There'll be often times where you may not make it on a flight. I know people that decide, hey, we're going to take a vacation, pack uh, warm clothes and pack cold clothes. We're going to go to the airport and see what airplane we can get on. And you just go. People often don't book hotels or reserve rental cars or things like that until the last minute when they know they're going to get to their destination. And that's really a cool thing. Some airlines may let you non-rev on other airlines. Some won't. 
that just depends on how their agreements are structured. And sometimes you're going to take a mainline jet to a regional jet and you'll end up at a transfer place and you'll have to kind of compete again for another seat on another plane. And so you always have to be aware of that. Conversely, on the way home, you also have to be heavily aware of the uh, fact that you might not be able to get on that flight to get back to where you came from. And the way I handle it is just by thinking about the fact that I'm probably going to have to buy a ticket if I can't get on this plane. If I, if I really, really need to get back or my family really needs to get back at some point, you may have to bite the bullet, but it's the game we play. And that's just how it is. There are also things called buddy passes. Buddy passes are given to airline employees to allow friends to also fly standby. And those non-rev tickets are an even lower category than um, pilots and, and family members. The buddy pass is usually kind of the bottom one. And I use that. I have a cousin. He lives in the Midwest and he loves to go see his family in the Carolinas. And he will use my buddy pass. There's a charge for that. It's steeply discounted at my airline, but I have, I think, six or 10 or something like that I can use every year. It resets on my anniversary, but it gives my buddy the opportunity to go get some flying and not have to pay a lot of money. I think a Midwest to the Carolinas is usually about $120. And at a major airline, typically these days, it's three, four hundred bucks that people are going to be paying to get to and from. So that makes it a really cool thing. The way non-rev works and the ease at which it is done is totally dependent on the airline. And the key to this entire thing is your flexibility and your patience. And you can't get frustrated at the gate if you don't make the flight. So that's that's a thing. You've got to really be patient and be ready and plan ahead. If you can plan ahead and keep a good eye on flights that are available and you can be a little bit strategic about it, then you certainly can be successful. Things that will affect this, weather, maintenance, those kind of unforeseeable things that just pop up, maybe a bad weather day comes in and there's IROP, like an irregular operation going on, and there's flight cancellations, all of a sudden an empty flight might get really full and it might be really difficult to find a seat. You might have thought you had a really sweet score and all of a sudden you turn around and there's nothing and you're stuck and you're having to get a hotel or buy a ticket or something like that. And so you just always have to check the loads of the aircraft. That means the load is is how full are they, how many seats are sold. You should always keep an eye on the weather. If there's a big storm coming in, if you live in Florida and it's hurricane season, you could get a little dicey, could get a little weird. A couple things to note. If you are going to non-rev, you need to dress appropriately. Consider business casual uh, is very important. Some airlines don't like people in workout clothes. So ladies, those yoga pants, oftentimes an airline will not allow you to fly if you are in something they consider inappropriate. If you have words on your shirt that seem base or not, if you have words on your shirt that seem base or offensive, it's all the prerogative of the gate agent, and you can't argue with them. The gate agent is the god in this little world. They hold the keys to the castle, and you have to get by them. So dress conservatively, dress smartly, closed-toed shoes, don't wear flip-flops, that kind of thing, and show some appreciation for the gate agent. Do you want to know my little tip, my little secret that I do? I will often either bring some candy or I'll go and I'll check in with the gate agent. And I'll tell them, hey, I'm going to Starbucks. What do you want in your coffee? Or what kind of specialty drink do you want? Whatever. And show a little bit of appreciation for that gate agent. Because first off, that is one of the hardest jobs in the airline industry. Having to deal with customers and people that are frustrated in the times we live in these days. If you can be sweet and generous and kind to that gate agent, 
they will go a long way to help you out. And so that's that, man. Stay relaxed, chill out, enjoy the ride. Non-revving is a lot of fun. And so that's my short little take on non-revving. I hope you found it helpful. I certainly love this opportunity that we get. This is one of the best benefits in the airline industry. And if you are hoping to become an airline pilot, I want you to reach out to my friends at Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. We will help you get that job, get to where you want to be, because we want you there. We want you to be non-revving with us and flying around the world. So next time, I'll be chatting with somebody really great on an interview episode. Thanks so much for joining me on Ready for Pushback. I'll see you on Monday. All right, pilots, that's the episode. I hope you've really enjoyed it. But before you go, do me a quick favor, subscribe to my show and leave me a review. Give me a one-star review if it was totally worthless. Give me a five-star review if it was the most amazing thing you've ever heard. I want to hear from you. So if you can give me a review, subscribe to the podcast, make yourself a little bit better. I will be happy. You'll be happy. We'll keep crushing. I cannot wait to see you on the next episode.